Hi, we're a just and equal Durham project sponsored by the Polly Murray Center. My name is Kate and I use she, her pronouns. I'm a rising sophomore and still undecided in my major. Um, this summer, I conducted research on the unceded occupied territory of the Shoshone Bannock tribe. Hi, my name is Mia, she, her pronouns. I'm currently a rising junior at Duke University studying English. In the summer, I've been doing my research from Miami, Florida on the unceded occupied territory of the Seminole and Sequesta tribes. I'm Ava, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a rising senior majoring in global cultural studies. And I worked on this project from New Jersey on occupied unceded Lenny Lenape territory. Hi, I'm Sophia and I use she or they pronouns. I'm the project manager for the Adjust and Equal Durham project. And I also work for the Polly Murray Center for History and Social Justice. I helped this summer from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, which is on occupied land of the Inu and Lumpy tribes. Before beginning the discussion of our research, we quickly wanted to introduce the Polly Murray Center, the organization that oversaw our Story Plus group this summer. The Polly Murray Center for History and Social Justice is based in Durham, North Carolina, and lifts up the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Polly Murray, a 20th century human rights activist, legal scholar, feminist, poet, and Episcopal priest. The Polly Murray Center documents and shares stories from historically marginalized communities to advance justice and equity for all. In 2010, folklorist Barbara Lau, who is the lead developer and executive director of the Polly Murray Center, conducted interviews for the Vox Pop project. Vox Pop stems from the phrase Vox Popoli, which means voice of the people in Latin. Through this Vox Pop project, Barbara aimed to document the narrative of place especially as it undergoes rapid change and growth. In these interviews, Barbara asked community partners to explore the power of story and reflect upon their own experiences with fairness and justice. She finished each interview with the question, in your opinion, what does a just and equal Durham look like? Due to the Polly Murray Center's limited capacity as a nonprofit, these box pop interviews have remained unheard by Durham community members for the last 10 years. Our project over the last six weeks has been to revisit the archive, interpret the stories and histories found within, and bring these narratives out into the community. After listening to the whole archive, we settled on three main goals. The first, to include and introduce new voices and perspectives by interviewing Latinx community leaders. The second, to revisit and build on existing interviews by speaking with past narrators to examine Durham's development and the narrator's change perspectives and visions. And third, share and encourage further public engagement of the archive by providing an accessible overview of the collection. Each of us focused on one of these goals and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Looking through the archive, I realized there were no Latinx community partners involved. So my original goal was to introduce new voices and perspectives to the archive by interviewing Latinx community leaders in Durham. However, due to time constraints, I was not able to hold these interviews. And so my new goal was to share the interviews already present in the archive in a more accessible way by making shorter audio documentaries that focused on different themes that stood out in multiple interviews, such as race, class, and gender hierarchies. For my part of the project, I aim to revisit the community partners interviewed in 2010 and discuss changes they had seen over the past decade. I wanted to investigate three main questions. What has stayed constant? What has changed? Where might Durham be headed in the future? I hope to highlight personal narratives and in particular, how individuals experience events differently and translate them across time and place to create a greater Durham narrative. I was mainly focused on goal three, which was um, encouraging further engagement of the archive. Um, due to time constraints on this project, I was focused on creating one audio documentary based on the first Vox Pop question, why are stories and storytelling important? Um, and the goal of that was to show the range of answers, the similarities between interviews in the collection and get people thinking about what else there might be that they want to listen to. As we were editing and interpreting the archive um, to create our audio documentaries, we wanted to 
prioritize preserving meaning. So we wanted to preserve the content and the character of interviews as we created our audio documentaries. We also prioritize communication and consent with our community partners. So we were being open and communicative about how we were revisiting the work, how we were using and sharing their stories. And even though they consented at the beginning of the interview, that was 10 years ago. So, you know, research evolves, usages evolve. So it's a good practice to continue to keep our community partners informed of how their stories are being used and shared. Um, and we also had a focus on people of color, narrators of color and their stories and experiences, um, which was in line with you know, Polly Murray's legacy of uplifting lesser shared stories and experiences. We started our research process by researching Durham and Durham history so that we could have a, you know, not complete by any means, but a solid understanding of the people, the places, and the events that were discussed in interviews. Um, so we looked at books, primary sources, and films for this. The bulk of our research process included really immersing ourselves in the archive of interviews done by Barbara Lau in 2010 with Durham Community Partners. We listened to all the interviews and carefully read transcripts and also often met as a group to reflect, take notes, and make connections among the interviews and between the interviews and current issues Durham is facing. We also had to listen to audio documentary examples to get a feel of what we wanted to do with our own final projects. We listened to a variety of different audio documentaries with different topics, editing styles, formats, types of music, etc. We also reflected as a group on what we liked about these documentaries and what we would want to do differently. Finally came scripting and editing for our final projects. We reviewed and learned from resources on audio editing styles, techniques, and software, and often met as we scraped and edited our drafts. Every time we would finish a product, we would revise them together as a group and learn from each other. Currently, we are still awaiting confirmation from community partners to share their narratives with the greater Durham community. However, we hope that our audio documentaries will soon be published to a playlist in order to be publicly viewed and shared. Also, in order to ensure the sustainability and continuation of our research into the future, we have spent time creating a guide for the Polly Murray Center and future researchers. This guide outlines potential pathways that these future researchers can take to expand upon the work we have done. Several options outlined include the development of a website or digital exhibit sharing our audio documentaries, as well as displaying information on the community partners and events from Durham history that has, have shaped their narratives. We have emphasized in these plans the importance of accessibility, as well as ensuring the longevity of the technology used to broadcast these stories. While we believe that there's still much work to be done in order to uplift these unheard stories and develop an understanding of the greater Durham narrative, we hope that our research this summer will inspire discussions within the community and lead others to ask themselves, do I think a just and equal Durham should look like? Ray, tell us how, how, who are you? I'm Ray uh, Earhart, uh, E-U-R-Q-U-H-A-R-T. I have no idea how you correct to pronounce that name. Farida, tell me how you say your last name. Merle. Merle, and it's M-U-R-R-I-L-L? -L? That's correct. Right. What do you think a just Durham would look like? A just and equal Durham would look like quality and affordable housing for everyone. Who oh, are just there and we have walkable streets and schools, you know, not zip cars rather than everybody riding in a car. <laughs> yeah, what I think about, it, yeah, yeah, that to me that's that's how you get there, you know, free health care, uh, you know, a decent house for everybody. Uh, we would have uh neighbors of all colors, all backgrounds, um, and maybe everybody in the community wouldn't fly the same flag, and that's fine. A just Durham for me is, is kind of like what I think a just world is going to be. It's that going to be a socialist world that's woman-centered. Well, the working class of Durham would have the most to gain because it would mean that 
as hard as working class, the working class community works, they would actually have safe, affordable um, ha uh, housing. Oh God, it's back to uh, 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 Marxism, Leninism. You know, the working class, you know, has nothing to lose but its chains. <laughs> uh, the, you know, the, uh, the big owners, you know, the, the, what the, uh, the corporate America and all those folks, they have a lot to lose. And what well, some people call it redistribution of wealth or redistribution of uh, the community value that all of us create, redistributing that in a just and equal way. I think it would just help show the beauty of Durham, which I do see Durham as a, a very eclectic and creative and funky kind of community, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to stay here. I don't like to say they have the most to lose, because I see this as a win-win. I, the only thing that comes to mind is that I would like to see the continued growth and development of downtown Durham. Because in the last few years, Durham has just been growing really beautifully, in my opinion. You know, I, I see it. Uh, I don't see it as, as the people losing anything. I see that they're gaining the respectability, the sense of self, sense of community, of those who much is given, much is expected. I, I see it as a win. Just continued success to downtown Durham. Great, thank you. Thank you a lot, Ray. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I see as a win.